Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about something very exciting that finally happened. We're going to recap a little bit on my last video that sparked a lot of conversation and we're going to do a beautiful makeup tutorial with a very unusual palette. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. All right, ladies, we are going to do a beautiful makeup tutorial, stretching it with some color. We have this Chanel palette 338 going into gold green burgundy. I mean, I'm really going for it this time. And then I don't know if this is going to be a silver or white or just more glitter. We'll find out. Could be really bad, could be really good, but maybe you have colors like this at home and you're like, how do I use these? What's the placement? We are here to experiment together. This is going to be so much fun. So I already put on a little bit of my rose lip balm i put this on to prep my lips i actually got a little ahead of myself because i already do have a little of my eye primer on i did my la mer infused emulsion just that this really nice milky hydration on my skin so it's going to be prepped ready to go i did do my eye primer which you know i start off with always base of the lashes all the way up to the brow bone i'll just put on a little bit more seems like my eyes could use a little bit more so we have some really exciting news, but we are going to recap a tiny bit on my last video about age and, and how I basically, I mean, I was just, you know, we needed to talk. I was just really tired about just constantly being bombarded with, you know, just not aging, et cetera, et cetera. And I just gave you my opinion. I had a lot of really supportive comments. I had some one-offs and what have you. I addressed them. It's an open forum. I never delete comments. I never turn off commenting. It's a community. We should be able to talk about it, what have you. I do have to set the record straight on some of the comments because they're just really, they're not accurate. You can always see those comments um, below the videos. And I just was so excited because in that whole video, I kept just saying how it was so nice just to see, just to come across one article. And guess what happened? I was over the weekend in the bath, on my iPad, researching all of my different articles. I have a news app on Apple that gives me all of the magazines, all of the newspapers. I have access to so many different things. That's probably why I feel bombarded sometimes where it's like the same kind of theme going on over and over again. But we have two articles that just came out. The titles are just phenomenal. So are you ready? The first one is True Beauty Starts at 40, Older Women Ruled New York Fashion Week. Modeling Silver Wave hits the runways at shows including Bathsheba and Helmut Lang. This was very exciting. I was really surprised. I have saw a lot of this over on Instagram. I've shared some stories over on Instagram about them really promoting women over 40, doing street casting. These aren't models. It was women from 40s to late 70s. I mean, this is really exciting. So this was really nice to see. I mean, at New York Fashion Week. And it goes on. These articles are just incredible. If you have access to the Wall Street Journal, it's a, such a great read. Bringing back Amber Valletta from the 90s. She was a supermodel. We have Kristen McMemmy. She's also a supermodel back in the 90s. She went gray. She has long gray hair. Very interesting. They had Molly Ringwald that was walking in one of the shows. She's an 80s actress. I mean, really, really eclectic and very interesting. I just was very excited. Then the next article that came up, it says, are fashion brands finally catering to women over 50. After years of glamorizing waves too young to order a beer, fashion and media are idolizing older women. But is it lip service? Here, brands that are actually serving these women's wardrobes needs. This was quite fascinating because we've been talking about, and I've said for so long, like brands are showing teenagers that can't even afford just even one thing at this store much less their real clients are these women that are, they're so out of touch with the real customer. I just was always so fascinated about that. Why, like who is in their marketing department? Who's heading this up, pushing out their customer, the women 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, wanting to highlight teenagers and 20 year olds that their customer can't even relate to. So it was just, this was just such a refreshing article for me. It says, but how deep does fashion's new focus on older women really go? And what do women who carry an AARP card along with an Hermes bag really want from the fashion world? To start with, an acknowledgement that they're valued customers. That was so profound to me in this article. Yes, that's exactly what we've been talking about this whole time, about how 
these women that have the buying power want to feel acknowledged. I was thrilled. I was like, okay, I was just complaining that I don't see any articles. And then wham, two came up that really featured in something so amazing as New York Fashion Week. And then we have brands paying attention to their real customer. So I thought it was really exciting. Uh, let me know if you've read those two articles or if you've seen anything that's kind of tipping the scales a little bit. It's just really exciting. So let's go in with this palette. And you know what? I really am drawn to the green. I want to do the green all over the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's almost like, I feel like it's going to be like a blue green on here, but I think that this is a really fun color. I have hazel eyes, so maybe this will bring out a little bit more of the green. Now, I was reading a review on this because I have told you before that I don't love Chanel shadows for the most part because they don't have a lot of pigment, but this, I had read a review that they were more pigmented, which you can see now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm starting at the base here of my lashes, right? Just like going in a quarter up, and then I'm going to the sides and I'm slowly just bringing it up a little bit here because I will fuse that all out. I don't want it to be too high. I think that we should really do the burgundy color, maybe in the crease, fuse it out really nicely and see how that looks. Now, there are some, a lot of editorial looks with the burgundy, like really going for it. Obviously I can't do that. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I don't think anyone can really do that. So let's just do this on the other eye. Now, remember, it will all come together. It's going to look like messy and what have you until we really perfect it. So if you hear snoring in the back, don't think you're crazy. My little Frenchie is here and she, it'll just, <laughs> I'm just hoping that she has to stop soon. But it is the life of a Frenchie mom, the little snoring in the back. So we're gonna take the burgundy here and I'm gonna put it on my eyeshadow blending brush and I'm going to, just tap a little bit. I don't know how much pigment's gonna come out, but I want this to be fused, like kind of giving this little bit of color, but then mixing in and going away. So you don't really see like burgundy, burgundy, because again, we don't have a brown or anything to work with this. So I want this to be kind of just like a little hint. So blending is going to be the key here to really getting this to look like almost like silk screen, right? Like it's pushed back behind the green. So I want to see a little bit of it, but not too much. Let's do the left eye now. What I would like to do is I'm going to take the gold and I'm going to use my finger because I think that it'll give me a little bit of that highlight that I want instead of fusing it out. I want it to be a little bit more concentrated on the center. I can actually just pull it down a little bit since it seemed to want to go down there. Now this is turning the green into like a yellow. So I'm not quite sure how that looks because I don't know if that actually though, I like it better than this. So let's keep going. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna take my short smudge brush here. I'm going into the green again, if it, you know, it's like a greeny blue, and I'm going to give some dimension right here at the base, if I can get that at the base of my lashes and coming up just a tad. So this is looking interesting. Now, I will save this little, my silver pearlescent for the end. I want to curl my lashes now. Lashes are curled. We're going to take the dark chocolate waterproof eyeliner and we're going to just give more dimension here. So I'm going to the base and since this is a soft pencil, I can really give it some kind of smokiness too. So I can go to the base just like this, just put it right at that lash line. So I'm going to be really thickening up that lash line. And then I want to just give that nice, beautiful, smoky, and not such a defined eye, as in with just that liner, you want it to be more of a blurred. You can take that short smudge brush and you can just kind of smoke it up a little bit. 
So I have the eyeliner on. Now I have a couple choices. I could take the gold and go underneath the eye if I wanted to. I could take the green and do the same thing if I wanted to. I kind of want to do something different. I think I want to I'm gonna line my inner waterline. I think that's gonna be the best thing to do right now. So that is very hard to do when, <laughs> when you're holding the compact in the camera. So you'll see that this makes a dramatic difference with your eyes. It closes down your eyes when you put that inner waterline liner on. It's very sexy, it's very different, it's very of an evening look, but I thought with this palette we could do that now. I'm going to just take a little bit of that. Think that, you know what, I wanna do the gold. Let's take a gold. I would normally do the green. Let's take the gold and put it right underneath this lash line. I'm gonna take my tapered blending brush. We're going to go into this icy color and I'm not quite sure what we're gonna get, but I think it would be nice to highlight just a little bit on that inner corner. So you can see that it's gonna lighten it up. All right, so let's put on the mascara. We could be tweaking a couple things after we put mascara on, but let's just do some volume up. Mascara is on, coming together really nicely. We're going to just make sure that we clean up on the sides, anything that fell down, especially with this kind of color. Make sure that there's nothing, not a lot of fallout at all with the Chanel palette. Now we're gonna see, we'll add a couple little extras at the end. Let me just brush up my brows real quick with my clear brow mascara. I'm going to use my Just Peachy to get rid of any of this discoloration right here. Not too close to my under eye because it will kind of blend up. Just taking my foundation buffing brush and I'm going to just go in that inner corner and come out, but I'm not mixing it with the actual makeup underneath there. I gotta be really careful not to go too close and not too close. I can always add more of that silver, but I wanna make sure that this is really nicely buffed into my skin. Still a little bit of discoloration here with my uh, post hormonal little blemish, so I'll put a little no redness on that, just work it out so it will be neutralized before I put on my concealer, my BB cream. Going in with my creamy concealer, I'm going to just, I like to go right where it kind of creases in and then I'll bring it down a tad because I have that pigmentation right there. I made this to be a dome wand where you'll see that it picks up most of the formulation at the tip so if you wanted to go in, like if you had specific areas, you see that that was just the tip, perfect amount. So you can also roll this since I made it round. So it's a dome and that's the way I wanted it to be applied because as a mature woman, you can do any application you want to. If you want it to be more precise, this will accommodate that. If you wanted to roll it like this and get more of that product, you can also do that. Again, it is creamy, it is not liquidy and it's not thick. It airbrushes out the eye area here. Not a lot of weight. I worked really hard on this formulation. Your reviews are amazing. Thank you for writing in your reviews. You love this concealer and it makes me so happy because this is one of the products that you use all the time and it creates so much confidence, at least for me. I can just use this even if I'm not using a BB cream or what have you, I can spot treat and then blend it out and feel confident that I'm addressing certain things on my face. And also I made it extra. I made the packaging extra because I knew that concealers are so important and you carry that with you. That is one of the products that you might take with you to touch up or, you know, just, de just depends on what you're dealing with. So sometimes I'll just drag it out to different areas, especially around my nose area here. So it'll be seamless when I put on my BB cream. I'm going in with BB cream in light. I do a pump in a quarter. Two pumps is too much. I don't wanna waste it and I don't wanna have extra. So I will just I usually start on my right side and my cheek area and I don't go all the way over. I do meet and I marry the two where I had my concealer and my color corrector and then I'll buff it around. So BB cream is on. This is the part where you start second guessing like, 
are my eyes too dark? Did I do too much? What have you? No, you didn't do too much. It's because you don't have any lips or cheeks on. So you have to allow for the rest of the process before you make the decision because you don't want to say, oh no, it's too much and then not see it completed. I'm going to use, I'm going to have to sharpen my little pencil here with my Nicole Beauty pencil sharpener. I did create one that is compatible, a sharpener with my eyeliner and my lip liner. So that's what you should use. You can see how it comes out perfect every time. We're going to just line our lips. So this pencil is called Silk and it's very natural. It's a really nice natural lip pencil. If you want to have a default lip pencil, this is a really nice one to choose. I wasn't sure what this eyeshadow is going to look like, so I didn't want to have too much of a lip, but I have Nick Ray, which I normally always is like my go-to, or I picked out 1975 because I didn't know if I needed a little bit more color. And then I thought, well, let me try something a little bit lighter and that would be my Pretty Smart. So I am going to just use Nick Ray. This is always my default. Then I thought it would be really nice to put Manifest and Glow over. It's a gold, it doesn't come out like a gold. It just gives that highlight. So it's actually like see-through. I just showed it on Instagram where I was in the light. You can actually see it here, how beautiful it is. And it, it looks good on anything on every single lip color that I have, I always top it off with Shams or Manifest and Glow. So it's really a nice way to pull that gold into the lip from the eye. So now all I have to do is a beautiful cheek and then we're gonna just set with powder. I'm going to take Classic Beach Glow as my blush, my highlighter and my bronzer. So I'm gonna just use my foundation flat brush and I will, Add this onto my cheeks, giving just enough color. I have a lot going on in my eyes, so I don't want a lot going on on my cheek, but I do need that color. And then I can, and easily in one palette, I can just flip it over my brush and do a little bit of the bronzer. Very light handed here. I don't want too much, just want a little bit of definition. And then I can use my finger just to take the highlighter and go on it's right here. It's just a very beautiful, silky, really appropriate for mature skin. It's not going to be glittery and highlight all the fine lines and those smile lines. It's just going to give you like this really beautiful glow to the skin. So now what I want to do is I want to just add a tiny bit more of the gold to my lids. And I think I'm going to use the brush and see what kind of application that gives us. Just a little bit more. I definitely want to set my, my eyes and my kind of T-zone with my Nikita Banana. This is my brightening powder. I'm just going to use my powder brush. I'm going to press it into the powder and then I'm just going to go underneath and just press under for that concealer in this T-zone area. So there we have a look. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this color scheme, I didn't really know what was going to, how it was going to come out. Now that burgundy almost looks like a kind of like a burnt brown. I think it's really beautiful. The key is ladies is to have the right brushes that are going to pick up the right amount of color. So the reason why I use the eyeshadow blending brush is because this is a fluffy brush. It's not dense. So when I go into a color like this burgundy, I'm able to wash it in to the eyeshadow and to this look and not feel like I just added so much burgundy because I was afraid that this would turn into looking like a sick color, you know, getting into that reds or that, you know, pinky reds or what have you. This was just a really nice wash in that crease, but using the right brush is going to be able to give you that look. So knowing your brushes and knowing how the application is, you can do any colors. It just depends on your technique. So I don't want you to feel afraid like, oh my gosh, that palette. Like when I looked at it, I thought to myself, wow, I don't think that would really look good on me. You never know when it starts to go on skin and how you blend it and everything that you're doing. It's just very beautiful. It's part of the aging process. We age and we get more beautiful. We learn, we grow. It's like the roses on my product. If you look at my product, I have an open rose and that stands for we're in full bloom, right? 
We're in this aging of acceptance, of learning, of changing, of, oh, I used to be like that, but now I've changed and I like this and I love these colors and I love to wear this and what have you. That's what it's all about. Oh, speaking of, let's see, I'm gonna do, I wanted to put on some gold. I actually, I think I'll do these. These are both vintage Shane John um, earrings. I like these, these I think will look really nice. So you can imagine maybe a strapless dress, maybe a black dress, maybe like a little slip dress with this look and just doing something different and looking at yourself differently as you're aging and accepting doing whatever you wanna do, ladies, if that means lasers, if that means different skincare, if that means a personal trainer, if that means a facelift or a breast augmentation, whatever makes you happy and you decide for yourself because you're doing it for yourself, that's what you wanna do, that's beautiful. You have to do what makes you feel alive. And I hope you enjoyed this makeup tutorial. I hope that you stretch yourself and try different colors. Do not stay in the same lipstick colors, eyeshadow colors, 2024 experiment with your beauty and enjoy every second of it. So until my next video, I'll see you later.